Welcome to the Solar Coaster, a renewable energy theme talk show right here in lovely Maui County. All right. Aloha, everybody. We're here. RE Plus 2023. It's kind of 4 p.m. ish on day uh, two, people are calling it. This is Tuesday. Uh, I, we just got some coffee in, and I actually kind of came back alive. I was kind of crashing big time. I'm going to thank Marissa, nice. Jason's daughter, for that. Yeah, you didn't bring me one. <laughs> yeah, you need one, man. Send her right now. There's so much going on at the show. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot to take in. A lot of energy. We got a cool guy here. Uh, this is uh, this is George Bettenhauser, and we're going to get a chance to uh, hear about some, uh, well, I would say this is one of the most cutting-edge technologies in terms of residential solar plus storage, that conversation, generators, power, th this thing that you're involved with here really blows my mind. And, you know, we do come across a lot of innovation, but there's probably like one or two things right now that have really got my eye, and what you're doing is one of them. So I want to talk about it. I want you to introduce yourself, my friend. Give us a sense of who you are. And then we'll chat. Yeah, uh, my name is George Bettenhauser. I am the VP of Business Development at Upstart Power. And we are the manufacturer, designer, manufacturer of solid oxide fuel cells for the residential and small commercial and industrial applications. What a sentence. <laughs> yeah. What a sentence. Manufacture of solid oxide fuel cells for residential and you say, small, com commercial, small commercial applications. Industrial applications. If, if this is really the bleeding edge, the bleeding of the bleeding in my personal view here, Jay. Yeah. Fuel cells have been around for a long time. The, the, the technical nut that Upstart Power has cracked is to turn what a fuel cell is normally a baseload device. They don't like to be cycled. So you switch them on they run forever and they can only come down when 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 they need maintenance what upstart power has been able to do is to turn that technology into a an on-demand appliance so you can start it run it for as long as you need it and then shut it back down so it consumes natural gas or propane only if and when the solar and the battery can't can't get the job done. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I come from an IT background. I remember when laptops uh, flirted with fuel cell technology <laughs> way back when. That lasted about a week. Yeah. So, <laughs> and what you're just talking about right now kind of makes a lot of sense to me. And so why they why they didn't why they didn't make it? <laughs> I, I have experience in the hard drive industry. I yes. That, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, what excites me about this is that we've had this dialogue, Jay, as we've been testing. We just did a one-hour stage uh, at the innovation stage. We actually got some people excited because we were talking about what it feels like to live with a solar plus battery plus integrated EV charger system with load controls. And not just theoretically or academically or these systems check out the spec sheets and imagine it but how they work over time during various scenarios, yeah. daily energy arbitrage, dealing with your energy throughout the day on a regular basis for a year, solid year, and then actually looking even at outage scenarios and how you are impacted and what the capacity of these batteries are to be able to meet your needs, right? And so that the cool thing about this is for, we've been thinking, oh, it's gonna, we need a generator just to run it in short period of time to fill the batteries up so we know we get kind of like this imaginary, you know, uh, uh, like perpetual energy. We, we, we think we're going to have energy for a very long time because we know we can quickly charge our battery and then we're going to be able to meet loads directly to the system. But it's and never come to fruition for grid interactive systems. Yeah, and that's the conversation with the traditional gas generator, right? You run it maximum efficiency at the shortest amount of time to use the limited amount of fuel. You charge up your actual storage, your battery storage, and then you shut it off again. It's a very different conversation. What intrigued me about this, first of all, is that I recognized that the costing of batteries made it kind of impossible, except for the rich guy that I dealt with a lot back in Maui that said, hey, man, just give me, you know, as many batteries. I want a week of autonomy. I'm like, you have a $5,000 a month bill with like a pool and an aquarium the size of an aquarium. <laughs> like you, you, you can't have autonomy for a week, my friend. No. You know? The, 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 the primary the primary application is long duration outages oh yeah Huge. what you just what you just said solar and battery storage on its own is like the, the four foot blanket for the six foot person you you 
the longer the outage and the less the the the, the, the solar radiation at some point the battery bucket is empty and your customer is going to be sitting in the dark and that's where customers usually get a home standby generator but that's also a primary power device and that integrated with a battery is really they're not meant for each other it's like a like a round peg and in it's a square been problematic hole. at best to get them to talk to each other it's been difficult i haven't seen one work not for a grid not interactive real, system i've seen them for off-grid work uh because that's kind of old school technology that's been tried over decades upon decades and basically that's that uh, that's there to a certain degree but you're compromised in terms of that power capability that you can get out of those systems um, when, when it's exciting about this to me, and, and, I, and you're going to kind of like, we're going to have to really prove this technology <laughs> together. I mean, this is not going to be, you know, uh, oh, great, it's going to work great. We're going to put yeah, it where its face is. trusting, but. Hey, well, <laughs> we like ideas, but we like the reality of those ideas. And coming off a year of seeing multiple power outages in Maui County with the solar plus battery and then the span system and then the EV integrated yep. EV charger and the EV, we get a sense of, uh, we saw it discharge out and go black, right? I, I lived that. There was an arc flash in Maui County about a year ago, okay? There are 65,000 utility account holders in Maui County. That's pretty much everybody. Almost everybody went down when there was an arc flash. The entire island went dark, dark. at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I remember I woke up at around 4, and some of my loads were on, some of my loads were off because I had the load control panel and the integrated solar battery system, yeah. but I was very low in my state of charge because I, on a daily basis, I have ener I, I do a 24-hour energy arbitrage. Yep. I make some solar, I, ha I have the batteries, I meet my loads, and then by the beginning of the morning, I'm basically out, right? This is yes. a perfect case scenario for you. So I'm down to like one or two kilowatt hours, and then I wake up at 0400 or at 0500 normally, I go, and what's going on? Some of the loads are on. Some of them are off. I look down in the valley. I usually see a valley of lights. Dark, yep, darkness. Dark. I go, oh, I'm going to go make some coffee and figure out what kind of power out is. You and I go, wait a second. What's my state of charge? I'm like 1.8 kilowatt hours. I'm at like 10 or 13% floor SOC state of charge. And I'm like, I'm not making coffee because that's a kilowatt. That's DEFCON what? No, yeah, I'm like, I got very little juice. I go back to my load control panel. Off, 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 off. That doesn't fly in my world. No. I, I light a no. fire. Yeah. <laughs> so now, but if I had had a fuel cell, at that moment in time, my life would have been very different. I got a little time. Oh, yeah, so describe this scenario to me. Yeah. If he had... A fuel cell. So you have a, a, a battery in your in your home that is sized to run all the loads that you want to run concurrently you have a intermittent generator on your roof your solar and you have the grid okay? the grid fails and there's no sunshine or it's at night and you keep using the battery the battery the bucket goes empty yep. the job of the fuel cell is to look at the stage of the charge of the battery and when it drops below a certain set point, let's say 20% state of charge, while you were still sleeping, the fuel cell would have come on, and at 1.25 kilowatts of power per hour, would have replenished the battery until it's back at 80% state of charge, and then would switch off again. If during an outage you have sunshine, and the sunshine is, is replenishing your battery, the fuel cell just sits there and does nothing. So it is the the, the most efficient... Uh, most effective way of, of, of selectively filling in the gaps that solar and your battery can handle in regards to your load. And certainly would have been able to make you coffee in the morning. At, at the, yes, it would have okay. been. <laughs> but you just said fuel cells don't like that kind of workload. That's an on and off. So that is, the, that is what Upstart Power has cracked. That's the technical nut. They have turned... We have turned the, the the solid oxide fuel cell into an on-demand appliance. It takes about 40, 45 minutes to ramp up. So the battery state of charge gives it a signal when to come on. Sure. It produces power at 1.25 kilowatts until another state of charge is, is reached and then it shuts back off. Okay. So it's, it, it turns your battery essentially into a never empty battery. And isn't that unbelievable? Never when I, empty battery. <laughs> when I think a never empty battery, that is a great term. When I think about 
the fuel cell in concert with also the load control panel. Yes. What a power play that is. That that is yes. They, Unbelievable. All of this, all of these combinate. I mean, the the, the the market segments in lots of little sub, sub segments. Solar and a battery on its own is perfectly fine for some. Adding load control and the four foot blanket for the six foot person analogy again during an outage, I'm okay pulling my legs in. Right? And I don't need the 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 resilience of, of, of full coverage. Sure. However, from an industry perspective, solar has about five percent market penetration today, which is great. Storage about one percent. Do you know who else has a five percent market penetration in the US? Internal combustion engine home standby generators. And it's the same homeowner, but we're talking to two entirely different purchase drivers, right? And they're not right now. Those are those are parallel universes. The 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 the, the, the homeowner that buys a is in the market for a home standby generator wants resilience, insurance policy for when the grid's not present. They don't care about the utility bill. They don't hate the utility. They just want an insurance policy to make sure the lights stay on in full when the grid is out. The homeowner that buys solar and now solar plus storage wants bill minimization and a little bit of resilience. Sure. But sure. it's the same it's the same homeowner and the homeowner of tomorrow will ask why do I have to choose? What is the system that gives me bill minimization when the grid is present but the utility is expensive and resilience when when the grid is out, complete resilience like a home standby generator which you can't purchase with, you can't add enough lithium ion batteries to achieve that combination. Right, so the, the issue that I see, just as you said, is that you can get a battery in a solar system and you can deal with your uh, build minimization and you can get a little bit of resilience. Yeah. And, and then you, you can add a, uh, a load control panel and do that four yep. foot, six foot blanket discussion where basically you're removing some of the loads to get better longevity on your battery yep. during an outage. Um, you know, but in terms of being able to get real long-term outage in terms of a, of a, of a power outage or a island-wide systemic system failure, which is the language we use in our piece, uh, pre-Maui wildfire, of course, the, you really can't get that from a load control panel alone. So in, certainly not in the way you're going to want to be able to power things. So the idea of an integrated system that gives you that long uh, long duration, duration backup. kind of backup is very attractive. Now, I've had generators before. I, I wasn't able to afford the ten twenty thousand uh, dollar you know <laughs> ATS and that you know the company the company there are good yeah. friends been on the show you plenty. Fit it on your I got them quoted out at like twelve. And they were like great deal. Yeah. Jeez, that's a lot of dough for a for a Jenny and and not tax credit applicable, right? Ah, uh, yeah. And so I got into that whole conversation, and finally I went down. I was like, I'm getting a, uh, you know, a Jenny from Walmart or Costco at like 700, 800 bucks. And I used that before I got my battery, and I had like a little plug in, and the yep. power went out a couple of times. And I got it, I fired it up, and I checked the oil, I checked the gas, checked the propane, whatever I was doing. In the middle of the night, and it sounds so loud. It's so obnoxious. Those things, you know, the light ones shake and make so much noise. And the entire community is like, they're all dark. Okay, they don't have power. I have power. And I'm making fumes and I'm making noise. And you're annoying the whole neighborhood. I'm annoying yeah. the hell out of them. They're nice people. Nice people. I'm annoying the hell out of them, though. So that whole deal of the Jenny, that thing is just not very attractive from a practical perspective. Would you be surprised if I told you that? The fuel cell is whisper quiet. I would be hopeful of that. You will not annoy your neighbors when I we would, test this I would this like at your that house. to be true, but I want to make you know I, I am a, a degree skeptical. But actually, the, the, what I've read that excites me is it's quiet. It is. It doesn't require me to interact with it. It's main. It's virtually maintenance free. It's three times more efficient. Free. Three times more efficient than an internal combustion engine. You get three times more electrons out of the same amount of fuel. Yeah, it that's is, amazing. It's, it's clean, a, 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 a fraction of the carbon carbon dioxide footprint. It is safe, virtually no carbon monoxide. The, 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 
safety. That's being, huge. Yeah, being in the, the 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 safety equivalent of the fuel cell is to to if it, if it, it was mounted indoors, run indoors, it would be the equivalent of being in the same room with nine other people. So the safety issue, I, you had told me that, and the case study said that. I remember. But I hadn't uh, brought that into my mind where I'm hearing about the problems with the diesel generators over in Maui at the hub centers where they're distributing uh, food and stuff. And people are getting some carbon monoxide problems. Mm. That's been happening. Now, That's I actually helped get a diesel generator out there, but it was separate from the communities. We had 500 yeah. foot of SO cable to get it up to a, a, like 15 houses. That was my good friends uh, over with Paul and the fellows yeah. in that did that work together, but it, that's that's an um, that's a very important value proposition. So we've got some strong value propositions here, and the 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 the, the game the game that we're about to play, <laughs> we like games, yeah. uh, is is try to break it. Sure. So I'm game. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is cool stuff, man. I got I got one more question though. We didn't talk about consumption. So you did, it takes fuel. How much of it? I mean, what are we talking? Relatively, relatively speaking, it's three times more efficient than an internal combustion engine generator consuming the same fuels. Sure. Right. So, so it, to run that 1.25 1. 1. kilowatts of power. Kilowatt, full, full till, 24-7. I, that's it. I have a sense, only because I ran the math on the Jenny at a certain kilowatt. Yeah. So if I recall correctly, and this, this is kind of like a to be confirmed but it was something like 7 kW at 2 pounds of propane per hour or one and a half yeah. to 2 pounds of propane per hour cuz i remember doing that math during that outage i was like holy shit i'm going to i'm going to drop the the s bomb here holy shit because if i had the, something integrated then we would have a, I, I saw that big propane tank and i knew that my power was about to go out and it was still dark do I still have enough propane? Yeah. 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 So uh, it would be great to have, you know, in that case, I was thinking about a generator, but of course, could, no one could ever get them to work. So now we're talking about the, we, we could probably do the math on that to, to squeeze down to where 1.25 kilowatts at three times the efficiency would be X amount of pounds yeah. of propane. Uh, so we'll have to figure out that, 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 that I'm, is. I mean, I'm just wondering, do you need a big 120 on the side of your house? Do you need just a barbecue grill thing? So in a in a in a in a in an alternative island market that we're uh, active in in Puerto Rico, uh, virtually the entire island uh, residences have propane tanks, and yeah. they're usually the the hundred gallon stand up tanks that you can you can replace, or the the larger uh, uh, the larger ones uh, that, that that get refilled by a by a yeah. by a truck. Because yeah. even even one of my my house on Maui ran off of regular barbecue grill lots of tanks. lots right, of different exists. applications for propane <laughs> right. yeah the, the fuel cell is not the only the only application there yeah. so okay so we've got this uh this fuel cell it's about to come to market what's the timeline look like and then what's our what's the game plan what's the challenge basically well, so we're in the early stages of introducing this product, and we've been having a conversation of testing uh, this unit, uh, one of the first units on your house, uh, to see whether uh, the promises uh, and the, the, the PowerPoint bullets are actually holding up in the real world. Okay. I'm, I'm going to warn you, Hawaii is not a nice environment just for technology in general. I am... So well, well familiar. Be, okay, yes, it needs to be hardened. <laughs> NEMA, NEMA, very high numbers. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Maui eats devices. It just yeah. eats it. It says, "Oh, you're a piece of metal. Here's some yeah. salt. Shh. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Seals, right? Yeah. That's Maui. So, uh, what are some of the, what? What are we? What would you like to? I can imagine we're going to have power outages, and then we're going to want to test how that operates over a power outage. Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah, you don't have to wait for it real power outage. So there is any number of scenarios that we can play in your home. Like simulate. Dis simulate it, disconnect it from the grid, letting the battery run down, making fuel cells starting, doing what, right? Turning the battery into a never empty device so you always have your coffee in the morning. I never you're empty wait device. For very That's... long for a real outage though. I mean, it, it's, it's not infrequent. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get a chance to, and what about the installation? 
How, what, what are we what are we looking at here on the installation side of things? So so what we've modeled this after is how batteries are installed. It's 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 essentially the same size as a as a as a battery. So the way batteries are being installed, back plane, mounting the unit, uh, we we've we've followed pretty much the established path. It? About. Yep. it is lighter than a Tesla Powerwall. Don't don't like a two, like a two man the, carry kind you, of thing. You, yeah, two 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 man two person carry. Two man uh, carry, get it up. And yeah. Rough dims. How big are we talking about? Uh, about the size of a Tesla Powerwall. Yep. Uh, a little thicker. Gotcha, gotcha. So we got. I guess you would run a gas line, right? Yes. So it'd be like a copper copper line, probably. Right, they're copper, aren't they? Pardon? Are they copper those lines? The gas lines? Uh, some. Some. So you run a gas line from the propane tank over to yep. where the, and you put the unit itself next to the battery, yes. right? And then how does it integrate to the battery? So it does not necessarily have to hang next to the battery. Okay. Because, well, there's there's a number of different ways you can integrate the fuel cell into your into your house. Yeah. Uh, one flavor is an AC coupled, meaning what comes out of the fuel cell gets turned into 240 volt AC and, and gets wired directly yeah. to the to the, the we're, bus. We're not a fan of AC coupled systems. Just, yep. But, you know. What's the other flavor? The other the other flavor the other flavor requires collaboration with the battery partner to integrate uh, 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 directly with the battery. Right. So there, there's a number of different... The, the, the unit is, is designed in a, in a modular fashion. The core fuel cell technology takes up three quarters of the box, and one quarter is for the power electronics that connect to the rest of the system. Yeah. AC coupled... Which is pretty typical for battery yes. installs. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. cool. AC coupled in general is good because you can retrofit stuff yep that's why a lot of things are ac coupled dc coupled is the most efficient way so the ideal uh the ideal architecture is because the fuel cell is a native dc device yep dc dc out bms into a battery and then only one set of power electronics into the home but that's there's there's any number of, of uh, uh, product permutations that will be on the roadmap. And over time, they're modular. You said right, so you could potentially go with multiple units. To yes, stack yes, and get they more are power. definitely. Yeah, you can you can. What we found in analyzing some 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 residential data from Puerto Rico was that the the, the rate is one one fuel cell for every every two power walls. So to to close the to close the gap that a, a long duration outage would leave for homes that are good with one Tesla Powerwall or two, the gap closes with one one but power. Assuming they have other types of generation on site, and they're, they're it's the filling. It's the it's the yeah. filling in. Take grid out right. and fill in for grid, but you have, still have solar. Right, but on cloudy days etc cetera, etc cetera. billing in for yes does does replace that load that's interesting i got something generation so if this works in a long duration power outage does it start to weaken the hold that the utility has on us that would be very desirable yes <laughs> but i personally am not an advocate for off-grid or grid defection Okay. Uh, my background is, is high tech. I've, I've watched the computer universe evolve and the computer today. We went from central, mainframe, thick wires and dumb terminals, right? To what network distributed, but networked yep. devices at the, at the end point. Yeah. So you want to be independent from the grid, not off grid. You want to be... I agree 100%, of course. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the exciting opportunity there because then we can all interact and there's a marketplace of generation and storage and consumption, all the good stuff, right? Which, which brings me to two other benefits, differentiators of the fuel cell versus an internal combustion engine. You, they're permitted to run in grid augmenting mode, meaning if the, if the grid is present but the utility wants to charge you an arm and a leg, or has a virtual power plant program where they offer you a send you a price signal that makes it worth your while you can being grid independent but connected can choose to feed electrons into the grid and make money from your system related to that 
the unit is also also eligible for the ITC at 30 percent for the next 10 years, which an internal combustion engine is really not. interesting because I had no idea fuel cells were listed. Yep. That's amazing. All right, so we covered a lot of ground here, and we really just wanted to touch base on the basic kind of core kind of value propositions, the technology itself, how it might be installed, and then some of the games we might play to try to break <laughs> this bad boy. And if it comes exercise out, it. exercise it, exercise it, uh, put it right in front of Maui and Mother Nature, and then see how the she... real world laboratory testing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had said something. I want to thank you. You had said something that was really cool. We have great discussions, but you said you're kind of the consumer reports of energy. And it was something I'd heard Jay said the same thing uh, for years past. Yep. Really, you want to be the consumer reports of energy. So the first time anyone ever said that to me, kind of unprompted. That wasn't me. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Well, thanks for that. Dude. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're thank welcome. You, thank you, All right. Well, we're looking forward to uh, a continued dialogue and, uh, and testing uh, experience together for the first, I don't know, probably the first fuel cell integrated to a residential setting in, in certainly in Maui, most probably Hawaii. Most definitely in Hawaii, yes. So another solar coaster first here, folks from Upstart Power and George uh, Bettenhauser. And we're going to uh, we're gonna play a, a little rough with you. So we're going to really put it through its paces, my friend. Please do. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks for coming on board. Thanks for having me. All right, aloha, guys.